Well, I've just about finished this old concert. You can see here the chassis is much cleaner. I redid some grounds to the chassis that were a little bit solder-starved in the past. Uh, the bias board, everything taken off, everything cleaned, repopulated properly. The bias set, uh, some heater balance resistors added. I'm about to tape off the old heater balance uh, center tap wire. I've explained why in other videos. You can see here, I've got some new Vichy caps in place because the old yellow Astrons were all very weak. New screen grid resistors added, uh, three watt, 470 ohms with good solder joints. I'm not gonna flip the chassis around so I can show this fully, but a new grounded power cables installed with a fuse on the hot and then going to the switch. So the hot is fused and then switched. The neutral is tied to the primary and the ground is left longer than the others, and it's going to chassis here, not to, not to the unreliable loose transformer mounting bolt. Amazingly, all the resistors proved to be just fine in this amp, and most of the original ceramic discs did as well. I'll show you the exceptions in just a moment, but all the Astrons were bad, so they've all been replaced with these Vichy MKT 1813s. These three ceramic disc caps in the LFO, the oscillator for the uh, tremolo, those were bad and have been replaced with new ceramic disc caps. The entire board was deep cleaned, and in certain places, like here with the input grid stoppers, the solder was removed and everything very much flushed with isopropyl and the heated to drive all old moisture out because there had been a little bit of leaking DC present on the inputs. So that's all gone now. This is a pretty interesting amp. The uh, tube chart inside the cabinet says 6G12. Uh, the build itself is almost to the 6G12A. Most of the circuit is the 6G12A, though the board layout in some ways is still the 6G12, where with the input grid stoppers on the board rather than at the jacks, for instance. But the tone stack on each channel, or her tone circuit, I should say, is neither that of the 6G12 or the, nor the 6G12A. It is uh, something in between, and I've not seen this on any previous Fender amps I've worked on, even from, from this era. I'm not gonna do a diagram of it or anything. If you wanna, if you know, you know, you can look at the schematic for the 6G12 and 6G12A, and you can look at this, and this is quite different. But it sounds good, and it sounds unique, and I'm not going to ununique this amp to make it match a piece of paper. Uh, this is how this amp actually has been all its life and now is, but it's working. I also did a deep clean of all the tube sockets, obviously, that's very necessary in these. And as I showed in the previous video, uh, the amp came with a poorly replaced speaker cable and speaker plug, and I ordered the correct old Fender style, though the black plastic, not the um, plain metal back of the earlier ones. And I ordered black and white cloth covered wire, the correct 18 gauge, but the vendor forgot to include the three feet of the white. So I'm going to call them and say, excuse me, I'd really like that white wire I bought. So this amp will be totally finished in a few days when that replacement wire arrives. Not shown in this video because it would have been boring to see, but I took all the knobs off the front panel and made sure all the nuts holding the pots in place and all the nuts on the jacks were clean and rear panel the same and all the power switches. I cleaned the input jacks. I gave some of the pots a cleaning. Cleaned up the front, front rear panel a little bit, put it all back together. Not very compelling video, but important to note for the owner. This is the normal channel. Now, you'll get to hear this amp for real with a real mic soon. This is just proof of, you know, proof of life. <laughs> So that works, nice sound. This channel is just a little bit fuller than the vibrato channel due to the differences in the tone stack and then a few other differences in the uh, vibrato circuit itself. <laughs> Thank you.
So a lot of really nice sounds available with this. And like I said, I'll show you what it really, really can do in a separate video, probably with a couple of these other 60s fenders I'm fixing up for the same client when the others are done. We'll just do a, a fender fest all together of real playing tests. But until then, this thing is ready for prime time or it will be once I get that one little bit of white wire. Come on, man. Really? Anyway, thanks for watching.